Hey guys, Apex here and welcome to my build guide video. This is the 97,000th time I'm running through this now because I keep forgetting something and it stays like these. I wish I had a manuscript that I was reading this from but I just think it sounds so artificial when you do that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember everything I need to say but yeah. Forgive me if I, if I forget something. I, b I bet there will be something at the end of this and I'll just hate myself for forgetting it. But yeah, that's how it is. So yeah, um, this is a video I've been thinking about making for a long time now. It's probably the most requested video I I get. Uh, I get a lot of whispers in game, in-game mails, YouTube comments. A lot of people seem to want to know the build I'm playing and they're asking about um, different things and how, how to do this better, how to do that better. And um, I've been trying to answer as much as that as possible. I've answered very little on YouTube because I have over 200 YouTube videos uh, so I don't have the time to regularly go through all my YouTube videos and check the comments and answer them and such. Um, in game I have answered I would say next to everyone if not everyone that have asked me something uh, I don't mind answering questions like that um, but yeah it's it's a bit much so I thought it would be a good idea to make it into a video because that's kind of what I do <laughs> so yeah uh, the plan here is that I'm making this build guide video uh, where I'm gonna brush over uh, all types of builds in in general I'm not gonna focus uh, it would take me it would take me too long this video would be hours and hours long if I was gonna focus on you know DPS builds and tank builds and healer builds solo builds you know if I was gonna go really in depth in each one um, so this video will be more of a generalized way of how to make your own build because that's another thing I'm not going to show you here exactly how to make the builds I'm running right now. Because I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect build. I think the build I have, or the builds I have, work very well for me. But it might not work as well for you. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, try to teach you how to make your own build if you're wondering about the process I use. And of course there are many ways to make builds. Uh, a, a week doesn't go by where I see some people in um, nation chat asking what is the best build so <laughs> not even what is the best tank build or DPS build what is the best build so clearly some people just uh, they don't they don't care about making these builds themselves they just want to copy paste someone else's work and uh, if, that's that's I can't understand that at all because for me Making your own build is such a big part of playing this game, but to each their own, of course. So um, I won't judge that. But for those that want to learn how to make your own build, I thought I would make this video. And like I said, I will brush over all, if at least most of the roles in game. Um, and at the end of it, I will showcase, uh, I will go in game and I will showcase um, my current build and gear because I get a lot of questions about gear as well I will be talking about that as well uh, it, gear in general I will be talking about skills and gear uh, or you should rather say builds and gear so yeah I will brush over most of those things but most of those those things will be on um, an excel document here because I like I like uh, comparing stats and running numbers and stuff also it's good to have a uh, uh, build creator online if you want to save yourself some gold and time not having to run to the new and change build and change build But yeah, I don't think there is such a thing as a perfect build Because there are so many different roles to fill in this game that a build that does this thing very well uh, is gonna have a hard time doing this other thing as well as another build that will then be stronger at that but weaker at you know other other stuff. So there is no such thing as one shoe fits all. Is that is that a saying? Um, so I'm not gonna sh like I said the build I'm running now. I think works extremely well for me, and 
I've always made my own builds. I, this is my third MMO I'm playing uh, and I love making my own builds and I've never just copy pasted someone's current meta builds. I think that's extremely boring to each their own of course but uh, yeah I, li I like making my own builds and uh, I've gotten a lot of shit from it. Uh, shit from people during the years of course because you know, people are very locked into their their mindsets of, you know, you gotta play the meta build to be uh, elite. So, when I, the f first few years, I think my, I think my main build was a blighter build. And the, the last couple of years, my main build has been a doomlord build. Actually, I did play a bullisher a fair bit for Val too. So, it was blighter, bullisher, doomlord. Those are probably the three builds I've played the most. None of them are really um, meta builds, so yeah, I uh, I uh, got a lot of shit <laughs> during those years. Of course, nine out of ten times it was shit from people I had just wiped the floor with, so that might just be them taking out their frustration. Um, not seeing the logic that I'm running a shit build and I'm a shit player, but I just beat you. They didn't seem to understand the logic of them saying that. Anyways, um, I hope I've covered most of it here. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, I'm going to make this into a YouTube video now, obviously. Um, I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can, uh, you know, because I've read YouTube comments, I've, um, I've uh, been asked a lot in game and such. So I'm making this video as a compilation to try to summarize how I, how I go through it when I look uh, at making a new build and uh, I hope you can learn from it uh, like I said again I'm not gonna show you ex like an exact build here I'm gonna show you how in general you'd make a build how you'd make your own build how what what three skill trees you end up with is entirely up to you I'm gonna walk you through it though and stuff and give you tips and advice on the way but what you end up with that's up to you and um, like I said at the end of the video I will go through a few a few more in-game stuff like my own gear and my own build and such but that's just what works for me because there are people that are playing um, you know I'm I've always favored the survival slash tanky builds that's how I played in all three MMOs I've been playing. I, I love I love the survival aspect. Also, it helped me because I have a very high ping since I'm from Norway and playing on an NA server. Uh, so I constantly have over 200 ping, and uh, being tanky helps a little bit with that because uh, I can survive a combo that would otherwise kill a squishy player. And as a squishy player, you, you know you just you have a harder time getting out of combos with a high ping. And you get punished more if you're squishy, obviously. So I've always um, that's another good reason for me to play defensive. But um, yeah, uh, like I said, I will make this into a video, and also I'm gonna try to watch the comments section of this video. So let this be the official video of mine, where you can ask questions you're wondering about um, regarding builds and stuff. I can't guarantee I can answer everything, but I will look to this video to answer build questions. Like I said, I will I will never tell you exactly which build to play. I will, however, help if you're asking um, questions about you know how to make this work or how to make that work and and just generalize question because uh, I don't mind sharing information, but I don't like. I don't like going around saying this is the best build, play this. Because there's no such, such thing. Doom Lord works very well for me. And that's has that has become my favorite build. That doesn't mean that that makes it the best tank build. It's just a build I've had a lot of success with. Uh, so yeah. Um, you can of course still ask me in game. But it would be best if you could stick to this video and... Um, keep the questions here and I will try to answer it uh, whenever I can and uh, yeah I'll get to the actual video now um, I think I've remember everything but I swear to god I've probably forgotten something <laughs> alright um, 
maybe I add it in the comments, uh, add it in the uh, intro or something, but yeah, in, in like text form. But yeah, um, over to the actual build video. Alrighty, let's dig into this. And as you can see here, there will be some numbers and information and stuff. Um, only the end part, I will showcase some uh, builds and combos. Not that much of it though, because uh, like I said, this is a generalized build guide. It's not showing you specific skill trees to pick and specific skills. Um, I will simply, I will simply make a makeshift build at the end of this, and um, just so I get to showcase it and stuff, as well as run you through a few of the um, stats I have in game and uh, gear and stuff. Uh, but yeah, most of the time will be spent here, and as you can see, I got an Excel spreadsheet uh, made as well as a um, notepad thing written up here. That's a little bit more for myself, just to kind of remember um, the different stages. So yeah, um, step one when making a build <coughs> is, like I said, I've heard it so many times, people ask, what is the best build? And I can't say too many times, there is no thing as a perfect build. There's none, so you gotta um, somewhat. It helps if you somewhat know which role you want to fill, and you know there's PVE. You know that's dungeons. Uh, I, I guess you can somewhat see it as doing Kraken and DGS, although those usually turn into PVP events. It's mostly dungeons, I would say, because um, those are instants and such. I don't know a lot of people that focus on dungeon builds. Uh, so it's probably best to go with a PvP build and then just use that for PV, maybe tweak it a little bit. Like I said, the, there are there are actually specific PvE skills in game you can use, at, at least PvE stats. Like there's literally re uh, received PvE damage and increased PvE damage skills. Uh, but yeah, like I said, PvE isn't that big of a part of the game, I would say at least. Uh, so yeah, I would suggest going with a PvP build and just using it for PvE with a few tweaks. PvP solo build, um, and also you can use that for pirating. Uh, a solo build is what I consider when you have a little bit of everything, when you're playing a lot by yourself. This is how I started out when uh, I was making my first build. My first build was a blighter build, that's Battle Rage Shadow Play Defense. I felt I had a little bit of everything there. I had uh, offense, I had defense, you know, I had survivability, I had a little bit of CC. Uh, and yeah, I, I think, honestly, a, a solo build is some of the best build you can make. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun to play around with that. Um, you know, because you do have some offense, you do have some defense. Basically, you cherry pick which stats are the best uh, when it comes to uh, the gear and stuff. For, for instance, in a cap, you know, a headpiece, you can, you theoretically, if you have a lot of gold, you can have a bunch of hero gems or you can have crit gems. The hero gems, the, the, tough, the toughness ones, you know, regardless of you wanting to be offensive or defensive, you know, they the the tough the amount of toughness versus the amount of crit just makes the toughness better. Like I don't think too many people will argue that. So by default, even if you wanna be offensive or if you wanna be defensive, though that's just a slot, you know, that turns into a defensive one. And you have a ch chest piece and legs. Uh sure you can have um different melee attack, magic attack and such in those, but most people go with resilience and toughness. So, you know, that's a defense stat. Then you come to the costume and underwear, and then you, like, you, you gotta weigh up, like, what's best there. Okay, let's see, uh, receive damage, ah, but that the amount is pretty low. But do you have melee skill Them Oh, that, that amount is pretty high. So, you, you cherry pick the best from uh, defense and offense, and also you um, balance your basic stats. 
such as um, you know let's say you were melee you then balance strength versus stamina uh, that was my blighter build in the start it w I had a good mix I had obsidian gear um, actually the f very first one I had was desert which is mixed between strength and stamina and then I got obsidian which was also a mix between strength and stamina um, and then I like I said cherry picked the different um, stats and I got a very good solo build you can go back and watch those videos just just find the videos where I play blighter those will be my solo uh, solo days and uh, yeah solo build is a very good uh, build for running alone and uh, potentially in smaller group fights and such then you have PvP small scale um, which is a little bit different than solo and raid you know that's you a couple of people playing as such uh, and then there's PvP raid which is then then you have specific roles and that's when I stopped playing my solo build that's when I saw the downsides with it because with a solo build you do indeed have both offense and defense but you're mediocre at best you're med mediocre at both you're not super tanky and you're not super offensive which in a raid fight isn't that good like I would find myself let's say it was a 10v10 fight and each raid had a proper amount of DPS tanks healers the DPS I, I did was, uh, wasn't so high that I could kill healers or some of the D DPS even, I couldn't kill them because the, it was being out healed. To, to kill stuff in a raid like that you need specific DPS and my DPS as a solo, you know, I, I don't want to call it a hybrid because that's something I use about uh, mixing physical and magical skill trees together that's a hybrid build to me so I'm calling it a solo build but yeah my offense wasn't so strong that I could out damage what the healers could out heal as well as my defense wasn't so strong that I could survive in you know inside a mage pool inside uh, the enemy backline so I kind of fell short on both and that's when I saw like okay you for this you you need specific roles so uh, that's that's uh, the i would say pvp solo and pvp raid are the biggest differences you'll see because uh, in a solo build you have a bit of everything but in pvp raid it's very specific roles you have specific dps that have gone all out and they're full offensive you have specific tanks that have gone all out and they're full defensive such as such as that so uh, that's when I decided that okay I think it would be fun you know I, I've been playing PvP solo build now and it's been a, a lot of fun and um, it's great for uh, one-on-ones it's great for small fights it's great for pirating but I want to try out a raid build now so I went um, full tank and um, yeah I've had a lot of fun with it but um, you also there are also drawbacks, of course, because uh, I can't do too much on my own. Uh, in a one v one fight, it takes me several minutes to kill someone. Uh, I can't really pirate alone too much, because that requires you usually to kill the the guy on the steering wheel, and I can barely kill someone uh, outside the steering wheel. So you you get the idea. Uh, so definitely it definitely has its downsides, but then it has upsides. I'm a lot more useful in a raid Because then I have my specific role there. I'm supposed to frontline. I'm supposed to go in there gather people up CC them set it up for uh, DPS to kill and it's a lot of fun to go balls deep in enemy raid and such so yeah uh, I just wanted to review each of those uh, roles um, and maybe give you a better idea of what you want to do. Step two is making the build. Um, I would suggest using an online build creator to to uh, to save gold. You know, because you're ch even you're changing between skills in game. Um, you uh, you know it costs you a little bit of gold. Also, online build creators 
often will show you um, combos and stuff so you get a better idea what those are um, I don't I don't know of a current one that's up to date that's the problem you gotta find one that's up to date you know because they've changed skills here and there several times so you wanna find one um, that has up to date skills and combos uh, otherwise it's kinda useless uh, then of course you wanna learn those combos and make your own combos um, playing arena is a good way to um, to um, see how it does in a fight although um, sparring arena is a little a fair bit um, rock paper scissor so you could just get a very bad matchup and struggle because of that so gladi arena might be better but this is a kind of beginner's guide to making a build so I'm assuming you don't have that great gear and in Gladiator Arena, um, there is no gear required. There's no uh, different gear classes, so you'll probably be up against people with much higher gear than yourself. So you won't learn too much from that. So in the end, I think Sparring Arena is your best bet. Of course, dueling people here and there uh, is going to help you too. And from that, you tweak things and make changes because. I've never made a like I've made a lot of builds and I thought oh my god this this is the perfect build. Then I tried it in the fights and I'm like mm, I could have had this instead and this I didn't really use so I can change that. So there's there's a tweaking process to it for sure. Um, you know you're talking about it being combat tested. And step three, get the appropriate gear. Um, I would make the build before I start getting the gear and I would be I would try to make certain that okay this this is what I want to go into this is a lot of fun because uh, in this game uh, you're pretty much locked into the gear you're getting because it takes so long to get the gear in the previous MMO uh, where Platinum and I came from before this one it was a lot easier to, to swap out gear we played every single fucking class you can imagine we were tank heal tank leech tank we were healer we were leech uh we were different types of dps like magic and physical we were we had specific uh, we, uh, specific pieces for specific bosses like in, in dungeon it, it was mostly a pve game we did not pvp in it um, so yeah, it was a lot easier to play different classes. In this, you're you're pretty locked in unless you got tons of gold, or you want to grind a fuck ton and um, uh, have multiple sets. So yeah, it costs a fair bit of gold to get a very good set here, and then if you want to have multiple, you know, times that by two. So yeah, you're you're pretty locked in, and you you will probably want to make your build and be sure about it before you start getting the appropriate gear. Uh, in terms of gear I've written up the three most common ones. I'm not even sure are there any outside this. I guess sure there are. I mean there's Delphinid and I and such but I've, I've written Aranor you know because it's it's the last tier of it, of it you could say. You're like you're gonna end up there no matter what. Uh, I'll brush over it uh, ever so slightly. Abyssal Library you get from the Abyssal um, Library Dungeon as random drops which you then take up with um, the experience you exper experience drops you get there or other library pieces which also drop there. The armor you get there I think is almost exclusively offensive. Uh, they will have stats, they will have um, special effects at uh, is it three three set effect and then five and seven? I think it's three five and seven, um, and there will be stuff like crit rate, um, reduced targets, defense, stuff like that. I think a few of them because they added some recently uh, that had a few defensive ones. But in in general, I I do think that that's a, a pretty pretty offensive set you're getting yourself there. Um, here um, on the other hand, actually I should mention before, uh, Bissell Library does cost a fair bit of gold honestly because you're feeding it the same way, you, the same in the infusions and stuff you do with Hiram and Eranor. Uh, and it does cost some gold honestly, it's uh, kind of expensive if you want to go to the higher grades. If you want to, it's, it's very good for starters honestly because 
taking it up to like divine doesn't cost that much but if it's when you start wanting to go for legendary and mythic which isn't that hard in terms of grinding the experience needed but it does cost you some gold um, here um, I think is almost the opposite of library gear uh, there's a lot more grind involved and less gold it does cost some gold but uh, less gold is involved and also it's defensive I don't think it has any offensive uh, stats to it uh, you can have a full set of it uh, here um, and I think it's next it, unless I'm forgetting something I'm gonna say it's at least next to fully defensive it will be stuff like decreased received damage max health resilience stuff like that um, so yeah that's that's if you want a more defensive set and then you have Eleanor of course the the full gold one if you just wanna buy your way to gear if you don't wanna grind any um, that's the way to go if you have lots and lots of money um, and I've written other I'm ref I, I couldn't really think of any others other than you know Delphin and Ionad but I've written the end tier ones here uh, and there you have it that's the three steps I'd follow to make a build uh, next here I will go over the Excel spreadsheet I have in the background and um, talk you through that part all right all right we're gonna move over to the Excel spreadsheet now in a second uh, I just want to mention that eventually this is all up to you uh, because I might have a few builds that I find per perfect for myself but there is no s such thing as a perfect build for everyone so there's no one size fits all I'm gonna try to teach you to self help and be able to make your own build um, and <clears throat> the Excel spreadsheet here in the background um, is towards how make how you make the build and getting the appropriate gear for that build and at the end of this, this video I'll jump in game and I'll showcase um, the choices I've made on both I'll show you show you my build and I'll show you my gear and talk a little bit about that but like I said don't don't just copy paste it please it's uh, it's much better if you can make your own decisions and make your own build because <coughs> I'll I'm just gonna show you the choices I've made when making my build and picking my gear so yeah um, I already talked about the different roles and stuff so maybe you have a better idea now but maybe also you want to try out a few different things before you make your final decision so um, step one we're done with now that's up for you, up to you to choose we're moving over to the make the build and get the appropriate gear part of the video <clears throat> so when I made this Excel spreadsheet I was kind of like a mad scientist about it kind of just wrote, wrote it down as I remembered it so maybe I should even include arrows pointing which way this should be read because it is a little all over the place it might actually be best if you just <clears throat> um, take a screenshot of this and just use it for yourself uh, the way you want to use it oh, everything that it said here though is uh, is pretty good it's uh, it's gold it's gold um, <clears throat> so yeah up uh, up top here you can see that I've um, written down some skills and stuff and this is the method I use when I make a build but this is uh, uh, this is um, assuming I know all of this already so I'm gonna show you the last phase of it like after you've understood all of this then you could start using this when I make a build I'm very systematic about it <clears throat> I will uh, I will go through each um, combination of build here uh, like good if you were to break a, a keypad that ha a keypad code lock that had three uh, uh, it had three possible combinations or three numbers and you try all the combinations on it so I will I would have a list here with battle race battle race battle race battle race battle, 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 battle and then occultism 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 and then 
various stuff here like defense, songcraft, witchcraft, oromancy, shadow play, etc. And then I would try all combinations systematically. I've already done this though, <coughs> so I won't show you me going through it. I will talk about each of one of these skill trees, but yeah, that's just how I do it when I make my build. That's I, I like to have tested all uh, options so I can feel sure that, okay, this is the best build for me. Uh, and then I will start writing down pros, cons, and if I have any notes to it. Pros, for instance, as you can see, this is my Doomlord build. Um, I would say uh, pros with this build is that <clears throat> uh, Battle Rage is very overlooked. That's something of the first I want to say that a lot of people would uh, skip Battle Rage because it's kind of like a damage dealer skill tree, but I find it has several survival survivability skills. It has several several uh, moverability moverability skills like behind enemy lines, charge, tiger strike. Um, occult. I'm just brushing over this. I'll get back to this a bit later. Uh, occultism, of course, has a lot of CC. Uh, occultism might be my favorite skill tree. And then you have defense, of course, which helps you stay alive. <clears throat> and then you have cons, uh, for instance, uh, witchcraft is a very good sk skill tree to have with its bubble trap, that's a super strong effect, so lacking that, um, it's, you might say I'm lacking Oromancy with its vicious implosion, so I don't have the pull in, I do have the library shields I can pull in, but having another pull in definitely wouldn't hurt, so yeah, there's, uh, like even with my favorite build, there's gonna be a few things it can't do. Uh, if you could cherry pick skills and it wasn't bound to skill trees, then hell yeah, I'd pick uh, from Oromancy, I'd pick Vicious Implosion, maybe uh, like the spell shield to because I'm in plate, so it makes me tankier towards uh, mages. Uh, I'd go into um, Witchcraft and pick up the, pick up the bubble, etc., etc. But it won't let you do that, so that's why I have multiple builds. Um, because there's no such thing as one build fits all. <clears throat> so I wish they would let us save more than three builds in game, because I have uh, I have needs. And then you add any notes about it as you have. Like I said, you don't have to follow this method. This is just the way I've done it when I made my builds, because I'm very systematic like that, and I wanted to test all possible builds. <clears throat> so I write them down here, and then I combat test them. But yeah, that's assuming. You know all of this, which I will start going through now. Okay, so like I said, it's a little all over the place, so I'm, I'm I will go a little in between here. Um, but yeah, I think I'll start up here with main and support. I like to divide the all the skill trees into one out of the two categories here. Uh, the main skill trees here are basically damage dealing skill trees, except for vitalism. That's why I didn't call this offensive, I called it main, um, because it's not just damage dealing, it's, it's also like like the main, like, like, the, like the core, the backbone, the foundation you want to have when you make certain builds. Like, if you want to be melee, you're gonna need battle rage. I've never seen a strong melee that had only shadow play, for instance. I just haven't. You want battle rage. If you want to be a strong mage, you want sorcery and or malediction. One of them will suffice. Uh, if you want to be an archer, you obviously need archery. That's the only skill tree for archers. <coughs> like uh, straight skill. Shadow Again, shadow play has like one or two arrows it shoots. And if you want to be a healer, vitalism is needed. Although song crowd of course heals a little bit as well. But yeah, these are the main, these are what I consider the main skill trees. <coughs> as well, as um, I, it might be because I have it from my previous MMO, uh, the one Platinum I came, came from. In that MMO, the way it worked was that you'd have, um, you'd have skills called builders, and they wouldn't deal a lot of damage, but they would have no cooldown, so you'd, you'd use the builders to gain resources, and after you had maximum amount of resources you then use consumer skills which was the main damage dealer skills it's a little similar here 
because all these skill trees listed here have what have what I sometimes refer to as uh, <coughs> builders or as it probably is more accurately here filler skills battle rage has triple slash sorcery has flame bolt malediction has um, mana stars which used to belong to occultism but it was moved to malediction when they moved um, when, uh, when they made that skill tree archery has endless arrow and vitalism uh, if you want to deal damage with it you can use holy bolt off of cooldown <coughs> sorry <coughs> And um, I'm not a great healer, it's, it's a thing I've played around with the least, but I'm pretty sure it has at least one heal you can spam off of cooldown. Shadow play does have a skill called Rapid Strikes, so Shadow play is really kind of in between here, honestly. I, I could honestly put it in between, because it's, it's, you know, it does have some damage dealing skills for sure, uh, like good ones, but... I consider it more support personally <clears throat> and why I talk about filler skills is that if you were to pick three support skills here let's say um, a classic build defense occultism or a mancy that would be a skull knight build a uh, long time uh, m a meta frontline build um, although at the time I played around with it I have a video where I do some arenas as a skull knight I did have, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I did have, um, the occultism did have mana stars, so you'll see me use that. Um, so basically, uh, and this is just my personal preference, I don't like ending up without, ending up with having all my skills on cooldown, because that's something you'll experience. If you play the Skull Knight, for instance, you had defense, oromancy, and occultism. And it would work with most combinations here. You'd at some point end up with everything on cooldown. If you used all your skills, let's say you didn't get CC'd too much, so you didn't have to wait so long, you'd end up with all your skills on, on cooldown, so you kind of just stand around there. Uh, and that's not a feeling I like, maybe because I started off as a hybrid spec, so you'd... Uh, <clears throat> I, I just don't like I just don't like that uh, but I, I'm not gonna say it as a is a, is that a rule set in the stone here that you can't pick three support skill trees but I would personally I like to combine uh, between these I wouldn't pick too many main skill trees and I wouldn't pick too many support skill trees but I'm not gonna say that it's shit. Of course, if you have occultism, witchcraft, or mancy, guess what? You're gonna have a build that can pull in and has a lot of CC. I've done that though, and like I said, you ended up with all skills on cooldown at some point and kind of just stand it awkwardly. And it might just be for a few seconds, but then one skill comes up and you use that, and then you stand around for a few seconds waiting for the next one. So with the filler skills, you at least have something you can do. You can deal a little bit of damage in between. And that doesn't matter too much for tank, I understand. But I prefer it to be like that. I prefer to have something to do at all times. <clears throat> so yeah, that's my definition of main and support skill trees. The main ones have these filler skills. All, uh, and also their main damage dealers. Also they're, are, they're the core of each build, especially damage build and heal build. A little less so with a tank build. A tank build could go more into your support. Uh, here I've written down some good um, good tips regarding any build you want to make. These are generalized tips. I will go more into the special ones, like for each class. Uh, but these are for general ones. Have a good balance of main and support skill trees for any role. Like I've already talked about that, that I would not ever pick three main skill trees or three support skill trees. I would have a mix. <coughs> Don't mix magic and healing skill trees. That's also something I'll come back to. Um, don't have too many damage dealing skill trees as a tank. Pretty obvious, you know, you're not there to deal damage. Uh, melee is better for pirating. That's, you know, if you if you do plan to pirate and stuff, 
melee, I, I've tested all different builds and melee is just the best simply because you have behind enemy lines which you can close uh, a 20, uh, 20 meter gap and then you can follow up with tiger strike and if you tiger strike the boat you will often land on top of the boat which is very useful for pirating so it's just I don't know, of all the skill trees, uh, all the builds I've tested, melee has been a, a core thing for pirating. Of course you can pirate as anything, but I I do consider battle rage a must have for pirating. Uh, archers don't front line. Somebody tell Lord Surge about this, <laughs> because uh, I've seen um, frontliners being healers, I've seen frontliners being, uh, you know, having melee. I have fr I've seen frontliners having mage skills, you know, like a skull knight. I've never seen a frontline archer, because archer doesn't have many AOE skills. It doesn't have many AOE e AOE CCs. It just it doesn't have anything you'd want in the frontline. And yet, play like Lord Surge is a tanky archer. So either he's standing in the front lines, not doing jack shit, or he's standing in the back lines, not dealing any damage, you know, because he's a tanky archer, so his damage is going to be very weak. <clears throat> so yeah, that's, you know, I love playing hybrid specs and stuff and trying out new things, but even I don't do that. Uh, and, of, and lastly here, check if there's a current class meta, meaning if there... You know, if there currently is um, simply skill trees that are really strong at the time. They might get nerfed, of course, but some persist for a long time. For instance, I've always uh, thought both melee and mage uh, being pretty good. They've, they've been consistently good. Sometimes one has uh, gotten buffed and gotten a little too strong, but then they've nerfed it. Personally, I, you know, I always hear that melees cry that mages are too strong and mages cry that melees are too strong. Uh, I like to think I'm pretty objective about it uh, and I, th I think they're roughly, you know, equal. Uh, archers have had the short end of the stick the, the, in the entire time of the game. There was one period of time where they were really strong actually, but that only lasted a few months. Um, but in general, they haven't been the strongest, unfortunately. Also, like I said, they're limited. They, I, I would. It might be a good solo build, or it might be a good DPS build, and decent at best. Honestly, I don't think an archery DPS will ever be as good as melee and uh, melee and mage DPS. Unfortunately, uh, unless it gets buffed. So I, uh, I wish they could buff it. Honestly, because I, I think archery is. Uh, I'm gonna stop saying honestly, because <laughs> I do think archers archery is a fun uh, skill tree, <coughs> and uh, vitalism is also uh, a strong one at at the time being. It's probably uh, the strongest skill tree. Like you know, it's not a damage dealing skill tree, but there's a lot of there's a lot of um, uh, healers now that don't even have to be tanky, uh, and they can out heal several DPS trying to kill them because their heals are just so potent that they throw one heal on themselves and they're back to full health every time. So yeah, uh, it could be important to check if there are any class metas. Uh, of course, if if it's just currently very strong, then it might not be worth it because they might nerf it. But well, uh, um, melee and, melee and um, magic has been uh, decently strong the entire time, so those are safe bets. Archery uh, has, like I said, almost always been a little weaker. Vitalism has... I, I don't know too much about healing and its healing history. I know they're getting a nerf soon. Uh, I think they were supposedly nerfing how you self-heal. So you'd still heal uh, other targets a fair bit, but uh, self-heals that we're going to nerf, I believe. <coughs> so yeah, those are my generalized tips for this stuff. Um, let's see. Also, below here you can see more sp uh, specials, uh, special uh, advice for each skill. Um, but 
let's see, should I start with any of these boxes first? Um, I think I'll... Yeah, I think I'll skim through a bit of... I, I think I'll get done with the skills first and then we'll move to the gear because the gear is located here in in these boxes. Uh, so yeah, to talk about specialized for DPS, usually two damage skill trees. <clears throat> the thing is, like I said, you don't just pick three um, damage dealing skill trees and you're offensive as fuck. Because actually, I, I can I even talk about that without going over this? Uh, I guess I can't. Alright, so I, I do need to brush a little bit about... Um, the uh, the gear now, so we'll we'll get back to we'll get back to this this one. Like I said, I did it a little bit like a mad scientist. <clears throat> so here I've taken um, legendary tier four weapons, untempered ones. I've written down their values in physical damage and magic damage slash healing. And you'll see a pattern here that you know most already realize, but it's something that becomes um, important especially when you're playing hybrid builds because of course if you're playing a straight um, a straight mage build or a straight melee build uh, you don't really have to think about it too much let's say for instance you had battle rage shadow play and then or mancy or witchcraft which aren't damage dealing skill trees then you don't have to worry about it then you'd of course go with a physical weapon uh, but and uh, and the same thing with if you had sorcery malediction and then with occultism or any of the support ones really then you don't have to think about it these are more for hybrid uh, classes and something to think about which for me has been very important uh, as you see a one-handed club here has 750 physical damage and it has 926 healing power a one-handed scepter has 750 physical damage the same as the club and it has the same magical damage as the club has healing power then it's the sword which has more physical damage not even as much um, the, I, I feel that's a little unfair because you know with a weapon like this you get um, you get two different damage dealing stats plus its highest damage dealing stat is higher than uh, the, the only one a physical weapon does. It says sword here, but it goes for daggers, uh, short spear, every every physical damage dealing weapon. Because <coughs> um, a damage deal, a physical damage dealing weapon here has zero in magic and healing, so it's a little unfair, I think. And bow again gets the short end of the stick because uh, it it has even less than a physical damage weapon. It has as low as the, you know, the second values uh, in a scepter and a club, which is uh, kind of sucky, honestly, for archers. Uh, but yeah, I guess they have the range. But then again, you can't say a mage doesn't have the range. So yeah, I have a hard time uh, defending that. I think it should at least have the same amount as a physical weapon, because that's what it is. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is something to consider when you're making um, a damage dealing skill set. Because, um, as you can see here, I've um, written down some things here, such as use hybrid skill trees for utility, not damage. Such, if you wanted to be a, a melee DPS, but combine it with magic damage, let's say you wanted to hybrid and do battle rage and sorcery you're gonna run into a few problems with that because uh, yes right off the bat you might think okay I would go for a scepter right because then you'd have a lot of magic damage and you'd have a fair bit of physical damage you know that is the that is the uh, normal choice I actually used to have an obsidian katana which had the same values for both of them had a legendary tier 7 obsidian uh, you know which is a thing of the past now unfortunately but that one had 
um, the same stats and I really like that because then then you'd employ people to maybe play more hybrid stuff because then none of them really suffered it has had the same DPS so it was suggesting that you can do both equally well and yeah I loved having that uh, but it's it was became too outdated so I went over to having a scepter <coughs> But yeah, basically, you uh, the first problem you run into is is the weapon. You won't have you won't have your full potential if you combine um, skill trees from different damage types like physical and magical. You just won't because if you were full physical, you'd have a sword. If you were full magic, you'd have uh, a scepter. If you were full healer, a club. But if you start mixing and matching with them. Unfortunately to say, you're, you're, you're gimping yourself a little bit because you're going to have less damage with the uh, physical dealing ones. Um, archery works, here is where archery comes in, and it works a bit outside the rules because a bow is in a different slot than the rest. So you could have um, a very good bow and a very good physical weapon and technically have battle rage and archery that's not a combination i would suggest i'm just saying in theory that's how it would work you could have a very strong physical weapon and a very strong uh, bow uh, i wouldn't combine those two because uh, they're basically the opposite of it, each other one is meant for uh, close combat and one is meant for ranged combat so you'd always only be using one of them um, so yeah i think that limits you uh, but yeah, technically bow works outside a rule. A better combination would be a bow and a scepter, or a bow and a club. Then you could self-heal, or you could deal damage, in, uh, you, magic damage. And magic damage is all often ranged, so combining that with a bow isn't the worst idea for sure. I played around with that as uh, uh, for a while, and it was honestly a lot of fun. Uh, if bow had been stronger, because you know, it's physical damage isn't great uh, I might have ended up with something like that because uh, I think I had source uh, malediction was not thing back then so I think I had sorcery and archery and it was a lot of fun because both of them are ranged and I had two different damage types so I could deal with both cloth and uh, plate users <coughs> um, but yeah that's the first problem you run into when you wanna have um, damage dealing skill trees for from uh, two different types of damage. The second thing you will run into as you can see in the box over here is that yes the weapon matters a lot if I borrowed Platon's weapons uh, weapon which I have a few times I will deal more damage because it has a higher tier type grade etc than my own and temper of course. Uh, but the next thing you start running into are the st basic stats. Um, an offensive melee user like himself has probably stacked strength because strength would give you more melee attack as well as melee critical rate. A strong uh, mage would have more uh, intelligence because they it would give you more um, magic attack plus critical rate and the same with you know healer and agility um for you know healer on uh, healer and agility spirit for healer agility for archer stamina doesn't offer any offensive uh, ability so it's uh, it's not something you should consider for being offensive <coughs> and the uh, next thing you run into is the problem of the advanced stats which um as you can see here is backstab skill damage crit rate crit damage etc you often find them in costume, underwear, cloak, etc. Then you have the skill trees. You obviously go with uh, offensive skill trees. Um, and then you have uh, crowd control, uh, which I've included because it doesn't deal damage by itself, but uh, it, it definitely helps setting up damage. Like witchcraft is awesome for it, honestly. It has very strong CCs and you can set up and deal good damage with it. It's not worth it for someone that deals as little damage as me. Um, one of my uh, best builds I consider was a Hexblade build. That's Battle Rage, Witchcraft, Defense. But I didn't have the, the DPS to follow up 
on any of the CCs. Like I could earth and grip the target or bubble trap him or sleep him. But I didn't have any big nuke to really uh, capitalize on that. So I suggest CC more for a damage dealer. But yeah, this is what you ha you have to consider. Because yeah, you could have a very good weapon. Um, but if you want to have max damage, you need to follow up with the appropriate basic stats and advanced stats. So if you were to if you were to mix and match with a hybrid build and have battle rage and sorcery, first thing first problem you'd run into is that your weapon wouldn't deal as much physical damage as magical damage. The second thing you'd run into is that you'd have to choose do you stack strength or do you check stack intelligence or do you stack a bit of both either way it's gonna gimp it's gonna gimp you because there's gonna be damage deal out there that are full intelligence or full strength get it so if you divide your sh your stats you're gonna have little less damage and it's the same with advanced stats because it, it's not called backstab damage it's called melee backstab, magic backstab, range backstab. And the same with skill damage and crit rate and crit damage, everything like that. They they don't have a universal for it. Uh, it's specific for ranged and for melee and for uh, magic. So, mm, uh, throw it a little dry. So yeah, that's, some, that's a problem you run into when um, dabbling with damage dealing skill trees uh, of different types of damage like I said bow gets a little bit away from it but just in in the uh, weapon slot because let's say you had an eternal Eranor bow as well with, uh, with a eternal Eranor uh, sword right so you'd have the best of both worlds so yeah you deal a fair bit of damage but then we come to the stats do you go with strength and agility and here you go you go with melee backstab or range backstab do you go with melee skill damage or range skill damage you see the problem so i don't recommend i don't recommend mixing um mixing the damage dealing skill trees honestly uh if you want full damage or at least realize that you won't get the full you won't reap the full benefits it's probably better to be specific towards it like how if you want to be melee have battle rage and shadow play and then one of the utility skills here that don't deal damage magic damage that is um, magic has it a little bit easier because you could have sorcery and malediction and so you have two damage dealing skill trees at least that are magic and then one support an archer would have probably shadow play because it buffs some of its damage uh, and then another one of the support and a healer of course uh, has two of these support ones so yeah it's just something to consider at least because yeah you could you could be uh, you could be dealing pretty good damage let's say you picked up battle rage and sorcery you could have a you could have a very good scepter and you could stack yeah and you could choose to stack either strength or intelligence and get a fair bit of damage and you could then stack you know the same type of damage either magic or physical here and yeah you deal a fair bit of damage probably uh, but against a pure a pure dps of either physical or magical you'd probably end up losing because he will just have more damage because he would have the appropriate weapon and he would have the appropriate stats it's just about stacking those stats up that deals so much damage so yeah <clears throat> that's something to keep in mind so yeah I go moving back to here now DPS usually two damage skill trees uh, which you know you pick two of these for either ones uh, archery doesn't have that luxury because it doesn't even have a second damage dealing skill tree uh, but magic does and melee does uh, limited damage with hybrid specs as DPS, as I've already talked about. Uh, use hybrid skill trees for utility, not damage. That's important because you can definitely mix and match with um, 
the support versions the the ones that aren't going to deal damage that's like an executioner build for instance battle rage shadow play so then you'd go with a, a physical weapon you know sword scepter whatever um, and then you could use occultism but not the but you wouldn't use it for the damage you'd use it for the cc and setup it would have you'd have songcraft you'd have witchcraft you'd have ormancy even defense you know <clears throat> so basically pick pick the hybrid skill tree for utility not damage like i said mages have it a bit better here because they could have both sorcery malediction and their occultism would deal a lot of damage you know because they, they that's magic and you know witchcraft not sure it even has damage dealing skills the 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 who does breath or whatever it's called which is implosion sure so yeah magic has it a bit better because there are more magic skill trees in the game that's just a fact it has it's more in main and it's more in support so they have it a bit better uh, i did hear that they're gonna add another physical one so you might be able to have battle rage shadow play and the new one and be pure melee like that uh, and of course, you know, as an archer, um, you'd have archery and most likely shadow play, and then combine it with a third one here. Uh, but yeah, it's I would definitely use it for utility, not for the damage. And again, that's not to say you couldn't have a bow and a good scepter, or a bow and a club, and you could self heal, or. Um, have a club or a scepter and and then use physical damage as well it's gonna deal a fair bit of damage but you will be surpassed by the ones that are pure that have the basic and advanced stats uh, specifically towards one damage dealing type all right over to the tank ones here um here it's the opposite of this here it's usually two damage skill trees and here it's usually two support skill trees uh, and as you can see here, uh, you'd pick, like I said, I'm not going to say you can't pick three support skill trees here. Uh, I just like having something that adds a filler to it, ad adds filler skills to it. Although I, I must admit, I Badlash might be the only one i choose from the main here. Vitalism, yeah, be a frontline heal tank. Not really what would you do? You wouldn't CC people, you'd kind of just keep yourself alive, but that's why you have healers. Archery, I've already talked about, why, why that would be shit. Um, malediction, it's almost only damage, so basically it doesn't add too much in the front. Sorcery as well, almost pure damage, no CC really. Um, and but battle rage is special because battle rage has a few things you'd want in the front line. Uh, for instance, terrifying roar makes you um, makes the debuffs on you last shorter while they last longer on the others. That's almost a must-have. And sunder earth, you can stand in to take less damage. If you use tiger strike life, you you get CC immunity, uh, and you have good maneuverability with behind and reliance and tiger strike. So honestly, Battle Rage might be the only main skill I would use as a tank frontliner. Uh, other than that, I would maybe end up with th uh, with three support skills. But I really like having Battle Rage. <coughs> and uh, yeah, second secondly, use a shield if you plan to have defense. Because uh, in the defense skill tree here, there are a few skills that require you to have a shield. Um, because... Uh, like a refreshment for instance that's the, the one that gives you more health it literally re requires you to have the shield um, and um, also readout there are some ancestral version of readout though I think one of them allows you to not need a shield but it gives physical um, defense instead of block rate uh, and before I move further on here actually yeah I'll brush on that in a second I'll go through a few of these skill trees I th I think are uh, best like I already went through the damage dealing ones let me go through some support ones defense is obviously very good it helps you stay alive against physical users mainly occultism has a lot of uh, um, CC's and stuff it's almost a must-have I would say songcraft I'm not 
too big a fan of yes you could stand in in the front there in the front lines and debuff uh, the debuff the enemy raid or you could buff your raid you would be in a good position for it the problem is if you're in the midst of all the action you're going to end up being cc'd a fair bit so with songs needing to be played to have an effect i found that i got interrupted too much to make this viable witchcraft little tricky uh, it has two extremely good ones with its uh, bubble trap and the fear you put on the ground those are really goddamn good but it's, it's, it's because they keep restarting themselves let me explain if you use earth and grip for instance or a sleep effect or a, a normal fear effect all those cc's listed break upon damage and if you're in a front line most likely with a bunch of people on you um, you're gonna have some some um, allies with you as well and the second you use earthen grip you know your damage dealers are just gonna break it so uh, a fear and a sleep and earthen grip etc they're not gonna last so most of the witchcraft cc's don't don't do much good in the front bubble trap and the the fear you put down are different because the fear you put down keeps renewing itself and the bubble the same way when the bubble bursts you get bubbled again and again so it has two really good ones i think it's best witchcraft is best utilized in one with ones or in smaller fights like i've used it a lot with just playing with platinum because I can tell him alright don't damage this healer now I'm gonna bubble trap him we'll focus on the damage dealer instead and we can do that but I can't tell a raid of 20 other DPS okay everyone don't touch this one I'm gonna CC him now <laughs> that doesn't work too well so I'm not too big of a fan of it because it breaks but yeah there's no denying how fucking good the fear and the bubble trap is so I would, I could use it just for that. Uh, Oromancy does have a vicious implosion for pulling, and it has a few, um, a few things that would make you take less uh, uh, magic damage, such as the fortress or br bracing blast. Was that what they renamed it to? When you use that one, you gain stacks of damage reduction towards magic. Also, it has the spell shield, which has also a combo. Uh, such things. I'm not the biggest fan of this because one, I don't really need the extra uh, damage reduction if we have a good healer. A good healer can keep me up. Um, so then it becomes pretty useless. So the only thing it offers is vicious implosion, which does have a which ha does have a low cooldown, so you do get to pull in a fair bit. Uh, but that's that's about it. It doesn't have any CCs or anything, so. I'm not the biggest fan of it. It's not the first thing I would pick up. If they let us save more more builds than three, yeah, maybe I'd have one with it. Uh, but I'm not the biggest fan anymore. Uh, and then brings us to shadow play, which is space. You know, it's a sneaky skill tree. You're supposed to go in and out. You know, deal damage, get out of their stealth. This is the opposite of what a tank frontliner would do. So. It's no, you'd, you'd not have shadow play. Uh, so, yeah, defense, occultism, witchcraft, maybe, or mancy, maybe. Uh, yeah, that's it for the tank ones. And I'll also go through, as you can see here, I have the same thing set up. You know, the same way it says this gives you damage, you know, this gives you defense. Having a shield adds more defense, of course. Uh, plus it enables block rate. I think you have parry rate with any weapon setup, but you only have block rate with a shield. So you need to have a, you need to have a shield to have block rate. Plus, like I mentioned, um, you'd have um, if you want to use the defense skill tree. Uh, it's also almost a must-have because a few of those skills relies on having a shield. Then there's the basic stats. Of course, you might think. A um, stat like strength only adds uh, damage, but actually it adds a little bit of it, it's either block or parry. Uh, stamina adds health, and I think block, and I think all I think all of them like even intelligence. Intelligence adds evasion, agility adds in, in evasion. I don't remember what. 
Spirit did if it was Block or Parry. But they, yeah, they all add something small as I've written here. Just go in game and check. And then you have the advanced stats, of course. Defense, damage reduction, block rate, parry rate, resilience, toughness, max health, etc. Uh, skill trees. Defensive skill trees uh, that reduce damage in one way or another. Um, just to say it quickly here. Defense is mostly towards physical users because you have... You're gonna add more defense. You're not gonna add more magic defense in most of the cases, uh, and also you have block rate, which is just good against physical users. The defense I consider mostly towards physical users. Of course, it will add you add some more health for you, so uh, it does help a bit against mages, but not that much. Uh, Oromancy is almost purely against uh, magic damage reduction. So if you had the two of them, you know, that's a really strong combo. Um, so yeah, let's see. And CC, of course, disables a target's ability to damage you. You know, goes without saying if I have Occultism, which doesn't really add any damage reduction, but it has so much CC that if I can keep targets CC'd half the time, they're going to deal less damage. You know? Less uptime for them to deal damage. So yeah, um, that's it for tank. Really, like I said, I already brushed. I already went through the support skill trees which I would have and the main skill trees I would have. Um, and here for healer, no damage skill trees. The uh, healers are often targeted first, so you utilize support skill trees for survival. Again, uh, it goes without saying that you know. Uh, the enemy raid often targets healers, so in in addition to vitalism, you might want to have something like defense. Probably not occultism, although you could CC them off you somewhat. Songcraft is for more healing. Witchcraft is probably the strongest thing you can have as a healer. Uh, just putting down those bubbles and uh, fears on top of yourself. Oromancy, most likely not needed. It does have a CC breaker there with shrug it off. Um, uh, teleport, of course, yeah. Okay, so I, it gets a maybe from me. Uh, but personally, you know, f uh, m clot, if, if you're a clot healer at least, you're not gonna be killed by magic damage. So then it's better for you to have defense because you're probably lacking some defense uh, towards physical users. Shadow play, eh, maybe in a small scale or one on one situation, but um, I don't think in a raid, you know. You, you want to be able to heal your team and you can't do that if you're stealth or if you're again free runner adds you know decreases cast time and stuff you know yeah th there's some combos in there i guess i don't know too much about healing so um this is just advice from an amateur healer but i do understand most builds in the game because i've learned to counter them so i know them from a counter perspective and lastly, solo slash small scale PvP. You know, that's just a good mix of damage CC and survivability. Uh, th there you just cherry pick the skills uh, and stats you want. Uh, like you'd have... Uh, my, f my first setup was... Uh, obs uh, no, nah, not Obsidian. My first was Desert, which was be between Stamina and Strength. The next one was Obsidian, which was also Stamina and Strength. Then I decided to go full tank, which I mentioned earlier. Um, but yeah, you're basically mixing and matching with damage and survivability. So basically, if you were a if you were a mage, you'd have intelligence. If you were archer, you'd have agility. In melee, you'd have strength, and you'd want to have some stamina as well. And then it comes to the advanced sta stats. You'd basically go through them and be like. Um, Okay, what what give good amounts here and such? So you cherry pick from um, the best of the defense and best of offense, and uh, yeah, there's there's no rules to which skill trees you'd have honestly, because you could just have you could go one way and just have very offensive stats, um, but use defensive skill trees. That would make you somewhat of a solo build. Or you could do the opposite. You could have very defensive stats and use very offensive um, skills. You know, I when I did it, I played a blighter, which was spell rage, which belongs in 
in the main here defense which belong in support and then shadow play which like i said is very much an in-betweener so yeah i guess it was very much a in-between skill so yeah i did have the best of both worlds but not great at either one of them uh, so yeah i think that that should cover it all um the last part here i will jump into game and and um, talk about uh, my specific build and my sp sp specific gear and such but yeah i would want to enable you to make your own build uh, and to make uh, make your own gear and such cuz there's no such thing as one si one size fits all so it's it's best if you for your playstyle pick your own stuff um so I'll just showcase what I have as an example but try not to copy paste it it's a lot more fun to make your own build and it's uh, you know it makes more sense if, if you're a more offensive player pick more offensive choices than I have if you're more defensive I'm not sure that is possible but you, you get the idea try not to just copy paste it try to learn something from this and um, make your own build be creative about it there aren't many there aren't many builds you can make that are totally awful. I did mention some types though like uh you wouldn't match um you wouldn't match uh, damage dealing skill trees too much. You wouldn't match actually that's a golden rule I forgot to mention. Uh actually no it, it was mentioned here. Don't mix magic and healing skill trees. The the reason you don't want to do that uh, is because as you can see here all of these or th the club and the scepter both have physical and they either have healing or magical but there's no weapon that has both healing and magical damage none so yeah you could have one of each you could have one you could have a scepter for dealing magic damage and a cl and then switch to a club to the to uh, heal yourself uh, but to me, I, I don't personally like. I don't personally like it. Um, it's too much weapon swapping and such, especially when my ping it goes very slowly. But yeah, some golden rules written down here. So I hope you learned something, and I'm gonna jump into game now and uh, explain uh, somewhat about my build and uh, my gear and such. So yeah. Here we are in DS and the final stage of my video where I showcase my exact gear and my exact build so to speak but I'm gonna wipe my build and I'm gonna show you it from scratch because I wanna I wanna be able to talk about why I choose the skills I choose and such and yeah I was I was gonna do it on top of that uh, tower over there but I fell so I don't want to. I don't want to go back. <laughs> Alright, so <clears throat> to talk about gear first, because I think um, the gear takes the least amount of time to talk about. Uh, my first gear set was Magnificent Desert, I think, and then I eventually upgraded to Delphinid. I don't think I ever had Ionad. Obsidian had come at that point, and I got Obsidian, <coughs> which had a lot of cool effects. Um, and yeah, at some point the discontinued obsidian and you were able to make infusions out of it for the new Hiram and that's where I ended up. Um, like I said earlier uh, in the spreadsheet phase, uh, Eranor is the the people's choice that have tons and tons of gold and don't want to uh, don't want to grind any for the gear. Uh, Abyssal Library gear, as you can get behind me in the large book uh, has mostly offensive effects and um, I'm a very defensive based player so uh, that wasn't for me. Uh, Hiram was really the perfect one because Hiram gear I think uh, at least you know the armor pieces I think they only have defensive effects I can take a look in a moment <coughs> so yeah that was um, that was the obvious choice for me uh, and also it's it's pretty cheap to get you just have to work hard to get it and I'm used to working hard for gear so that was fine by me all right so let's take a look here um, so yeah I'll go through some armor pieces and weapons and all that stuff uh, it's pretty straightforward I'm a plate user so 
uh, you'll see a full plate set effect on me and um, I've started taking up a few pieces as you see the two that are legendary uh, and I have one weapon but I'm ex I've been extremely unlucky with awakening I've had to take nine or ten attempts on each one of them so yeah it, it's going extremely slow <laughs> but I'll get there one day <coughs> but yeah um, pretty straightforward here uh, I'm, I'm actually gonna take this out and just see what effects it can get because I'm pretty sure it only has defensive effects let's see other than the main stats you know max health I consider that defensive received damage types ah, yeah, I guess you have shield defense pen and shield defense penetration yeah so I guess those I haven't been a fan of those though so yeah that wasn't really a choice basically <clears throat> what most people are considering when they're looking at this it's to receive damage ones and it's resilience and it's max health I'm a plate user so I need to compensate for my lack of uh, magic defense uh, by having received magic defense in it afterwards it's it was a matter of resilience versus max health um, and um, <coughs> I I've stacked defenses instead of stacking health um, what I mean by that is that there are a lot of pieces armor costume underwear you can have health like a shield also you can have health uh, gems in it you can stack health and have way more health than I have but I'm almost um, can always almost guarantee you you're gonna be a lot squishier than me too because uh, I've stacked pure defenses and not worried about my health my health comes almost strictly from having full stamina this is just my preference though let's say I have 50,000 health uh, which is close to what I have here and let's say another tank has 70,000 health so he has 20k more than me I can almost guarantee you he's gonna be squishier because he's had to sacrifice um, he's had to sacrifice um, different defense values here and there that I've gone straight into <coughs> so that's just my preference a lot of people like having tons and tons of health I've gone for the defense uh, over health I'd rather have like a strong foundation and have my 50k health last longer than someone with 70 or 80,000 health uh, so yeah that's that's just my choice there uh, and um, yeah that's why I went for resilience instead of max health because I just wanted to be pure tankiness and not health of course having more health helps you as well you know it gives you maybe a few more seconds to live if you're taking a lot of damage but if you're squishier then you're not actually tankier you get it so me and the 70 80 thousand health tank might die at the same time he has more health I have more defense um, I haven't really tested that so that's just my theory at least uh, I decided to go for plate because I played as leather for many years uh, so if you go back and look at my little uh, my somewhat older videos I was a leather user I was a very tanky leather user though and um, yeah I wanted to be a full tank but that didn't necessarily mean I needed plate I could have kept uh, leather and then I would have picked the values of yeah well, what would I have picked uh, I would either have picked received magic damage in these pieces and then stacked um, physical defense gems because you'll see some of my pieces here they have physical defense and not a lot <laughs> do I have any um, yeah I guess these like I've stacked physical uh, I've stacked magical defense gems here because I went plate and plate is all out physical so I needed to compensate and have magic defense where I could if I had gone for a leather set however I would have spread it out a little bit uh, I would have had for instance received magic damage and then I would have had uh, physical defense gems for instance uh, maybe a physical shield as well you know just spread it out I don't think plate by default is is uh, any tankier honestly I hear a lot of people complain about plate users but I've seen uh, very tanky leather and uh, cloth users as well you just have to balance out the stats uh, differently so I also consider cloth user um, 
<coughs> and in that in that case you'd have to have um, received you know physical damage the thing is though plate has it a little bit easier i guess because plate works against both archers and melees so you can pick receive magic damage towards the the only that remains aka uh, magic mages uh, and it gets a little bit more complicated if you're a clot user because then you have to you know you already have good magic defense so you don't need that but you need to uh, be strong be stronger against physical users which, which is both archers and melees <coughs> what I would have gone for though would most likely have been received melee damage reduction and resilience I think I would have skipped the archer one uh, it would have left a little opening but uh, I don't think archers are so strong that I would need to worry about it too much I would just hope my other defenses would uh, help me take care of that like my parry and block and just all the physical defense gems but yeah I think I would have gone into received f um, melee damage because I think melees are stronger than archers that's just my um, idea about it though <coughs> so yeah uh, I, I don't think me going into plate was I didn't even I didn't even think about it too much I was just oh, I want to try this out because uh, I might as well have ended up as a clot or leather user, but I had played as leather as many years. I liked it, but I wanted to try something new. Um, so it was clot or plate, and I don't know, I just kind of ended up with plate. I thought that was the mm, best choice, or more natural choice for a more melee user. Uh, but yeah, I don't think, uh, I don't think going uh, leather and... Uh, and clot is gonna make you a hell of a lot more uh, um, squishy if you just balance out um, the, the defenses overall. As you can see here I got uh, melee critical rate which doesn't make a whole lot of sense since you know I'm a full tank. If I could afford the hero gems I would definitely go for them but they're over 20,000 each and uh, <coughs> Yeah, I haven't I haven't made that investment. I'm hoping at some point they will get cheaper. Although they just got more expensive. Fucking Platinum bought them for like four, five, six k each. So I don't want to have to pay like four times that price. That's just killing me on the inside. Um, but yeah, if I eventually can get my hands on some on some, uh, on some physical, uh, no, or some uh, defensive gems, I will. Uh, chest piece, pretty straightforward, right? Resilience, I think everyone has gone for that. I have a revitalizing share because I have defense. I actually have another plate um, uh, plate belt piece for when I don't run defense, you know, because this is only good if you're running defense. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't need those gems. I think I just have magical defense uh, gems in the other one. Uh, Thundering Titan gems. Hope to get it up to Mythic soonish, um, so I can have a fifth one. I'm not sure I'll go for Eternal, that's a long way off. Parry rate in these puppies, um, it's between parry rate, focus, and evasion. I like stacking certain things though, so since I already have an affinity towards parry and block, I just went for parry. Uh, evasion is for agility and intelligence users which I am not so evasion was out and focus is an offensive one and since I'm defensive parry was pretty natural for me <coughs> skipping the skipping the cloak because I want to get through the armor straightforward here as well toughness gems resilience gems yeah no big surprises really uh, and yeah it will show very clearly in my costume and underwear how I've stacked um, pure defense. As you can see here, I've gone straight into damage reduction and resilience here. You can have max health in both underwear and costume. I don't have it in either one because it didn't leave me room because uh, I wanted to have this stuff. So my uh, costume and underwear looks very similar. They all have received uh, damage and resilience. Uh, my cloak then has uh, uh, the block and parry cloak. Uh, I have magic defense because you know I'm a plate user, so I need to compensate. Uh, and then I have stamina, of course, resilience. Uh, I could have had toughness instead of strength, 
but the toughness value was pretty low so I decided to just go for strength instead um, let's see my necklace the, the top one from honor that was kind of just what I f uh, fell into it does have decreased received damage which I really liked um, a little bit of toughness and focus um, nor yet accessories of, of course oh my god I can't I can't tell you how much gold I spent re-rolling and re-rolling and re-rolling because after I, you don't run out of re-rolls because you only unlock the stats like with Hiram you unlock the stats right away so you see if it's a good or bad piece and then you can just throw it away or you know fodder it if it's a bad one with Noriette accessories you don't unlock the third effect until either tier 2 or tier 3 legendary uh, so at that point you need to succeed or you're foddering a legendary piece which I had to do over and over again and you know when you feed that in sure you get a lot of experience but it costs you several thousand gold <laughs> and I spent so much getting this shit right um, so yeah receive damage in both of these as well as magic defense like I said, you could have uh, health in these, but I've gone straight into defense. In the um, rings here, um, there there is no uh, there is no received damage, so I did go for max health and then magic defense. <coughs> My weapon is a pretty good weapon, honestly. Um, of course, it doesn't help me too much, and I didn't go for uh, um, melee critical damage gems because I'm not there to deal damage. I'm there to be tanky. Um, so yeah, I just uh, I just went for this one. Uh, I use this weapon in um, in fights in smaller in smaller fights where there aren't a ton of healers because then the damage ideal can be helpful. Um, but if we're in a, in a raid fight, uh, the little damage I heal just gets out healed by AOEs from healers. So then I just swap to one of my two choices here, my Burning Pledge, uh, I'll, you, as you can see it doesn't even have magic attack and it has a lower DPS than I am wielding here, like 400, no, uh, 300 lower, and um, yeah, but I'm not there to deal damage, so I just put this on if I want to be pure tankiness, because this thing has uh, received damage in it which adds another 4% to me. So this is just what I'm wielding if, I just, um, if I'm just uh, if i doing raid PvP and stuff and my DPS literally doesn't matter. But yeah, in small scale of 1v1s, I go for a better weapon, which is the one I have here. Uh, I also have the, uh, the Kraken Scepter, which is uh, very good for a snare and slow effect. So that's, also, that's a more of a swap 2 weapon though. <clears throat> but yeah, as a tank, you could use any weapon really, because you're there to CC um, and just stay alive. Shield. Uh, I went for block rate here, as you can see, over max health, because uh, again, I'm fi I'm uh, gone for defense, not I've gone for quality over quantity, you could say. Um, so yeah, this is my physical shield I will use if I see the team uh, we're fighting has a lot more physical users. Uh, than magical users, or if I'm just dueling a physical user. Uh, also, it has a pull in effect, so I swap to it when I need to pull. Um, if the team then has more magical users, as more you know balanced raid teams and stuff have, I go to buy magic shield, which is a tier uh, tier four here I'm here, <coughs> as you can see. Um, and then again, I have another kraken swap to weapon. This is a this is one for stealth. Uh, it does de decrease this enemy's move speed, accuracy, and stealth detection. I don't use it for that effect. Uh, this this one is my kind of drop aggro one. I don't use it in raids ever. Uh, it's more out of, get out of combat. If uh, usually PVE related, sometimes PVP related. If I need to drop combat and I need to uh, use foods or whatever. <coughs> so yeah, I have a couple of swap twos for both weapon and uh, shield um, the bow is obviously just a stat stick I don't use any archery skills so pretty straightforward just magic defense in it as uh, the same as the loot here just uh, defensive effects on it so it's a stat stick again and yeah that should be all of my gear I believe let's talk about stats 
Uh, let's see, a th roughly a thousand melee attack. I have a little bit more magic attack, you know, because the scepter. Very high physical defense and, you know, somewhat lower magic defense. But you gotta remember, I, I've stacked received um, magic damage, so the difference isn't even this big. And also, if I wanted more balance, I put on the magic shield and it looks more like this. So, which is a lot more balanced. That's what I said, like, a plate user can be basically as tanky towards mages as against physical users. So, I have to assume it works the same way the other way around. A clot user can be as tanky towards melee users as with magic users. You just have to, you just have to spread out the other stats better. <coughs> uh, as you see, strength pretty low in intelligence, agility and spirit have been drained, I've put everything into stamina as you'll see here, uh, the first thing I drained was in, uh, was agility because agility I felt was the least useless, the three first stats here are for range, the last one here is for evasion and I think it's only worth having it if you're gonna stack it which I wasn't, so agility went first after that it was between spirit and intelligence that had to be drained uh, and I went with spirit because you know I do run hybrid builds so intelligence isn't totally useless spirit is um, uh, spirit does give you it used to give you uh, a little bit of magic defense it wasn't so much that I felt it though but I think they remo removed it to uh, uh, stamina here as you can see so it affected me even less as you see I'm, I'm lacking all mana regen uh, magic accuracy uh, and a little bit of power rate but yeah it was just uh, slightly I wanted to keep uh, the intelligence instead <coughs> alright so into the more advanced stats here uh, as you see I don't even have 100% melee accuracy because you know I don't have the strength for it uh, so yeah I'm missing roughly 1 out of 10 shots Low melee critical rate, which I would put even lower if I had toughness gems in my cap. Uh, low, pretty low melee critical damage, but you know, at some pieces you just have it. Like in um, in this one, for instance, you kind of go with critical and critical damage. I honestly, I think you could go for attack speeds. That might have actually benefited me more. I would have been able to. Um, would have been able to, yeah look at that you, you could have attack speed that might have benefited me more because that works for all my skills I would be able to use multiple skills faster so that's actually something I didn't think about uh, that might be a good swap to because then you could output more skills quicker uh, so yeah that might be a sh slight mistake on my part I just kind of automatically went to mi uh, crit and crit damage let's see uh, as, you know these effects as well. Uh, my magical critical rate is less than five percent, so you know I'm not gonna deal a lot of magic damage. Um, I don't know where that focus is. Actually, no, I do know. It's from this one, isn't it? Yeah. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had any. Um, doo -doo. Yeah, defense values. Uh, <coughs> as you see, my parry is pretty high, and my shield block rate is extremely high. You can have it even higher because I think you can have it in costume and underwear. Um, as well, I, is it any of the accessories maybe have it? So yeah, you can have it higher and I used to love block and parry um, back when a block or parry would mean zero damage dealt to you as well as the CC effect they try to put on you. Uh, wouldn't have gone through. Now the CC effect does go through and some of the damage so uh, I haven't really stacked it f too much. Uh, for me it wasn't a big choice to have it in my in my shields here and stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, higher resilience of course. Could have had higher toughness if I had the hero gems. Uh, and here you can see my uh, <coughs> damage reduction values and that magic damage reduction is higher, uh, about uh, 12 points higher than these because I have it in my armor. <coughs> um, so yeah, because in my underwear and costume I have for all of them, but I have about 12% more. So when I'm wearing the magical shield here, as you see here, I'm lacking 
in terms of defenses here, my magic defense is about 9 points, 9% 9 lower uh, than my physical, but I have 12% more magic damage reduction, so it actually puts it over the physical defense. So yeah, I think you can be tanky as leather or cloth or play it, you just have to balance out the stats um, for it. Let's see, uh, and lastly, just um, received healing is not something I've sta stacked. I know it's very good, but it's more something you want to stack if you know you're going to have a pocket healer around with you. You know, if you have a girlfriend or um, a boyfriend or, you know, friend that's a pocket healer and just follows you around a lot, then this one is definitely good. Uh, Platinum and I don't usually have a healer, so... Um, that's not a stat I've specced into. I just have it a little bit here and there where I couldn't have anything better. Uh, it also helps you with health pots though. Uh, it, it makes the health pot heal for a little bit more. So yeah, I think that should have been all about my gear and my stats. I guess, like I'll say it again, don't just copy paste what I've done. Please just try to figure out your own shit. That's, that's why I'm explaining it. If I just wanted you to copy paste it, I, I would have just shown it to you. Okay, this is my values, copy them. I've explained why I've picked the choices I've picked so you can make different choices. Because uh, I, I don't know that my setup is perfect. This is just what I've gone for. Alright, so I'm going to go to um, a few mobs and I'll test out some skills and stuff. And I'll show you uh, some combos and I'll also make a Doomlord build and go through the choices I made there. Alright, the moment mo many of you have been waiting for. You've been asking me about my Doomlord build and stuff. And I won't show you exactly. Um, I won't just show you my Doomlord build because I want you to copy it. I'm going to show you how I go through it and set it up and stuff. Uh, you, so yes, you will end up seeing it. But I don't want you to just copy paste my homework here, I, I want you to be able to make your own choices so that's why I'll go through each skill and explain why I'm picking it and you can either agree or disagree with it and then make your own build, that's what I want, I want to teach you how to fish so you can go out and fish okay <laughs> so like I've said a lot of people uh, actually I should probably start with showing you my other builds too. I have a Horde Breaker build that I use for raid PvP. That's specifically raid PvP. It's very good. It has a lot of AOE CCs and stuff. Uh, my Doomlord build I can use for uh, 1v1s. I can use it for small scale. I can use it for large scales. It's uh, It has a little for everything. <clears throat> but I, I tweak the build slightly for uh, depending on the situation. Uh, and then my num number three is uh, just um, uh, play around with spec. Uh, I currently use this one for farming mobs, but uh, since my alt has become very uh, offensive now, I usually just bring him and kill mobs with him. Uh, but yeah, you'll sometimes see me in sparring arenas with really weird builds that I'm just testing. So yeah, the third one is my test tests one. <clears throat> But yeah, like I said, a lot of people will just pick three supportive skill trees. You know, instead of Balrish, you would have Witchcraft or Mancy or something. Uh, but I, I want to I wanna show you why I think Balrish is so underappreciated as a tank, tank one. Because like I said, I wouldn't have Archery, I wouldn't have Malediction, I wouldn't have had Sorcery. It's specifically Balrish that I think does a very good job in the front lines. So... I just uh, I hope to see more. Actually, I've I've seen a lot more Doom Lords and stuff running around. So maybe I've inspired some people. That's always nice. Uh, but yeah, I want to I want to talk about why I think Bald Rage is is so good for frontliners and stuff, and why I I have it in all my builds really. Starting it off, uh, like I said, I like to have this one as kind of just a filler skill. That's Basically all it is, because um, uh, sometimes you just run out of, you just run out of skills uh, that you everything is on cooldown, and then it's nice to have at least something to do. Uh, charge um, is some good movability, but it's only 12 meters, so it's not really a must-have. So I'll skip this one for now, but this is a maybe. 
battle focus I used to think was an absolute must have back when I when I played more of a solo build that had both defense and offense because uh, you know it gives you both defensive and offensive capabilities in it so this was like my favorite skill I had the instrument for it and everything that took it up in rank but uh, now that I don't deal any damage it's not worth it anymore whirlwind slash is maybe it's one of the greatest skills that that frontline that frontline tanks don't usually have because they don't have battle rage in them but I love it and it's not because of the damage it deals it's because of the first attack tripping slow targets and there are so many slow effects you can apply that I just love this thing because it's it's a trip it's tripping everything that's slowed uh, and then um, I can't pick it up right now though <coughs> then you have Sunder Earth which is uh, amazing uh, amazing you put down uh, a rift in front of you that you can stand in for seven seconds it makes you Takes 30% less damage. Hello. I love engaging fights with this thing and just standing there and soaking damage because I'm basically immortal in this thing. With the damage reduction I have plus this damage reduction. Jesus Christ. So yeah, that's another thing. I, I can't believe. I can't believe people don't don't run battle rage. It's it's such a must-have for me in frontline fights. I just don't understand. Uh, of course witchcraft would help, of course ormancy would help you, but I don't know, battle rage for me is just the shit. It has so much for frontliners. So yeah, I can stand in this shit and, and tank uh, damage for 7 seconds. Easy. Frenzy fucks you over if you if you want to be tanky. So skip. Precision strike is for damage dealers, clearly not for me. Skip. Tiger Strike is very useful. I use a Tiger Strike Life. It's both uh, good as a movability skill, but it also stacks. Uh, see if you read the last line here. Grants the caster one second of immunity to disabling effects for each target hit. That means if I hit five targets, you'll end up with a five second. But you, you know, you spend a second or second and a half to use Tiger Strike on five targets. So I usually count on three seconds at least. You have three seconds immunity to all disabling effects. That's all CC effects. Cannot be CC'd. Hello! This thing is awesome. You can't be CC'd in it. You have three seconds to cast whatever you want to. It's fucking dope. Uh, I can't pick it up right now though. <laughs> Bond break is towards snares. It used to be better because it would give you a damage reduction thing which it doesn't anymore so I don't use it. Terrifying roar also very good. It toughens yourself, make yourself uh, stronger uh, against CC effects which we talked about how why that's so important because you can cast different things you know if you're not CC'd. Um, as well as uh, it weakens the targets around you so you can CC them more. So, you become more CC immune, they become weaker towards CC. This is every tank's fucking dream. How does everyone in the universe not have that? Uh, hammer toss is, is more or less single target based. Uh, it is such a small OE that I don't use it. Uh, and behind enemy lines, a very good go in and out skill plus. Uh, you can uh, combine it with whirlwind slash and trip targets. I'm gonna show you some combos afterwards uh, So just don't worry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up whirlwind I'm gonna have target strike and behind enemy lines That's all for the battle rage and you see these are fucking must-haves I consider every one of actually maybe not the filler one, but the rest of them I definitely consider them must-have skills I, th I think it's awesome battle rage should be in every frontline build I don't care what anyone says <clears throat> Occultism. I use Crippling Mire Quake because that's an AOE. Um, that's an AOE slow, and you know what we can do with that. So picking that one. Uh, this one I use for for um, more uh, one with ones, uh, but it, uh, it's a channeling skill. So if you get interrupted, aka if you're in a raid fight, you're definitely gonna get interrupted. So I don't pick up this thing for that. Play Dead is very good. It's um. It's a, f a stun for 3 seconds if you deploy it. It's a stun for 6 seconds if you die to it. I've never died though, so I don't know how it works when you die. 
Um, but yeah, you want to combine that with Death's Vengeance. Cursed Thorn is a maybe. I personally like it. Um, but yeah, you you'll have some skill issues. Uh, so let's let's uh, talk about that one later. Uh, Shadow Step. I don't need. I don't even need more movability skills really. The other ones even have special like this one gives you CC immunity. This one makes you able to um, combine it with whirlwind slash and trip. Shadow Step for me is like meh. Boneyard. I feel fuck yeah. Uh, fuck yourself or your team over more than it fucks the enemy raid over so it's not my personal favorite summon crows is also maybe for me like like cursed thorns um, it decreases your accuracy but I was misled when I read this because the combo here says decreases all accuracy 200% when used on impaled targets I thought that meant 200 st straight accuracy that you know if even if a person had like 120% accuracy because he had so much strength or intelligence or whatever, it would guarantee it took it to zero, you know, because it removes 200. No one has 200 accuracy. Um, but yeah, it's actually 200% of its its old value. So as you read there, uh, affected enemies reducing their melee and ranged accuracy 30% for the duration, so it's actually 200% of 30%, aka 60, so it does 60% uh, reduction. So that that's what makes it a maybe for me, because uh, that's about half your uh, your accuracy. But yeah, it's a it's a good maybe. Um, Hellspear is a goddamn must have. I prefer the one that launches out right away, the basic version here. Um, I know the flame version is also very good. It lasts longer. The CC you deploy with it lasts longer, but um, it has a delay before it uh, before it CCs. And I prefer to have the one where you deploy it instantly because I use it as a counter for like if a healer is about to throw off a big heal or a mage is about ready to meet your people, then I can use this thing to immediately stop someone. But yeah, the flame version is very good as well. Uh, the skill is definitely a must-have. Pain Harvest is also maybe... Um, it's critical strength, you can decrease active occultism cooldown minus one second. I don't feel it's too strong, don't it? You have to keep... You have to keep... You, you have to keep having it up, so it's not my personal favorite. It's not bad, though. Uh, Shadow Vortex, also a maybe skill, because... Uh, if you use it, it depends where you use it. If the fight is kind of standing still and already grouped up, then it's very good. But you you need to pull them in to it. They're not just gonna run in there. So you always gotta, uh, and also they can just fly out or run out, teleport out. So you you need to set it up so much. I feel like you need to pull them in. So you need to CC them. And you need to somewhat. Is, uh, you need to soft CC them with like a rate or something like rating inside there means that they're not going to be fast enough to run out but yeah it, it needs you need to combine it it's definitely a soft CC uh, so it's a, it's a maybe for me <coughs> uh, rate is a must have for me I love its effect sometimes I go over the one you put on the ground uh, I feel that one is also very good the one I don't use is the one you move around on the ground because I think that has a weaker, um, weaker um, CC on it. I uh, let's go check that right away. Let's see. This skill allows the caster to move all the spell its effect, but has a weaker rate's curse effect than regular summon rate. See so this thing. Inflicts rate curse on all affected enemies in significant slow moves. Yeah, I, I think this one is as strong as of a CC than this one. This one deals damage too, though, but you have to channel it. This one has a slow, this one has a uh, weaker CC, and I'm using it for the CC, not the damage, really, so uh, I don't pick that one up. Um, and then you need Death's Vengeance for, to make Play Dead work, uh, so I'll, I gotta pick up something now. So it's between Vortex. Summon Crows and Cursed Thorns. You'll see me use all three. I will swap between them now and then, depending on situation. Like Vortex, it need to the fight need to stand still. I never use this one for a naval PvP because uh, if you're on a boat and stuff, and the boat is moving, this thing literally gets left behind in the air. Um, 
plus it needs a little more setup too. Uh, this one might be a little bit better for 1v1s, so I often go with this one. But yeah, this one can also work in in um, in raids because it says when you run over the uh, thorns, they burst out immediately. Uh, seeds burst instantly if stepped on. So if you put it on a person and he's running around, and then people step in those foot tracks, they immediately sprout out. So yeah, it, it's definitely not bad for raid either. It's really annoying. Uh, and Hell Spirit, like I said, must have this thing. Must have. All right, over to defense. I always, uh, oh, I should maybe start in the start here. This this one I used to like, but to remove the actual stun effect it deals with it. So now it's to get more shield block rate, which I don't care too much about. So it's a skip for me. Um, I go always go with a tough toughness effect here because it's a self heal. And you know, if you have a good healer, you don't really need to use them. But I like to being able to heal myself if it comes to it. Uh, Bull Rush is also a single target effect, so it's a it's a very strong one in one with ones. But uh, I'm making a raid, I'm making a raid build here, so skip for now. Boastful Roar also very very strong in one with ones, but it's um it's a single target skill. So I'm gonna go with uh, Mocking Howl instead, which is basically a weaker version, but it's an AOE based one. And I'll show you another neat trick it has afterwards. Um, lasso, I know the rest loves the lassos, but yeah, single target. If if I could pull a if I could could pull multiple, maybe I'd use it. But I've never felt like oh, we really need to stop this person. So you know, I usually pull in a lot of people. I don't single target. Uh, readout, um, I like to use this one, or um, I like to use the defense version that gives you more physical defense. That one is also hard to fuck with because uh, even if somebody steals your shield, um, uh, you will, you won't lose that effect because you don't need a shield to use it. Mocking Howl, I said, as I said, this this thing uh, this thing gives you a shaken effect on the enemy, and a shaken effect is a little slow, so you can combine it with Whirlwind Slash. There's so many things you can combine with Whirlwind Slash. It's amazing. Um, but also it has a very neat trick to it, which we'll get back to in the end here. Uh, refreshment is also must have more health. Thank you. I can't pick it up right now though. It does require a shield to use, so keep that in mind. Retribution, I don't consider very good skill at all uh, by itself, because um, it doesn't work the way it says it does there. Like, if it actually dealt 1347 damage to people that attacked me. Yeah, that would be good, but it, it's the damage it deals is so minuscule. But I'm going to pick it up because it's it's used in a combo. Revitalizing Chair, I'm picking up for the same reason as I have Toughen. I like to have a little self-heal if I need it. <clears throat> and let's see, then I need to pick up this thing. And if you don't want to go for this combo I'm about to show you, uh, I would pick up instead of retribution because by itself retribution is not worth it in my opinion I would go for imprison uh, or invincibility invincibility is pretty self-explanatory you want to use it if you're if you went too far and you're taking too much damage and it's like oh shit button uh, like oh shit I'm about to die here so use it then if you're like in real trouble and uh, you know somewhat because if people see you go invince they're usually gonna stop attacking you and go go attack something else. So it's like it often saves your life. Um, in prison is also good. Uh, this one I was using for something else though. But yeah, um, use the circle version. So I jump to the back line and then imprison the healers with me. No, I'm not gonna kill the healers. Uh, but obviously they they have their line of sight broken, so they won't be able to heal the raid members. And you'll often find healers in the back line because you know they want to stay away a little bit from the damage. So I can often imprison healers, and by that taking out several healers, um, that would have saved some people we're about to kill. So I would pick up one of these two if you don't want to go for the the combo I'm about to show you. Uh, but yeah. I'll show you some combos and shit now. I don't want to pull them in here, so I just gotta click them here. This is for demonstration purposes, anyways. Um, 
Let's see, start with the easier ones, maybe Thunder Earth, you don't really combo. Yes, you can combo it here, uh, but um, I don't usually use it, I just use it by itself. Like, I'll engage a fight and then I'll run into it here, and inside this, I take 30% less damage, it's pretty awesome. So, like, I engage with behind enemy lines and then I can use it immediately. Also, it has a low cooldown, so you can use it a lot. Terrain Frying Roar, you know, you'd use before. Uh, like either just as you went in because you want to use it on yourself or you want to use it just before you're about to start a CC rotation. Uh, Tiger Strike Life, like I said, you'd use, um, you'd hit, like, pretend I hit five targets here. Like there, I hit five targets and now I have a CC immunity up for three seconds. What you do with that is up to you. I like to use channeling skills uh, or if I have bubble trap with me, bubble trap takes me a second to put out so I use that then. Uh, Sunder Earth also takes me half a second to use. Uh, or you could or you could use um, Rate, it's one I use a lot. Like I'll, I'll Tiger Strike and then I'll start Rating because at least with rate um, being a channel skill, you 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 know you'll have at least three seconds before you get interrupted, which is very good I think. So you'll often see me tiger strike, and if I see I'm in the middle after tiger striking, like if the last mo if the last person I tiger struck, tiger struck, <laughs> was um, like further away from the raid, uh, then I want to use it obviously. But if I end up kind of in the middle of things, then yeah, I'll definitely use it, because then you have three seconds to channel something. <clears throat> and let's see, so yeah, Tiger Strike Life, super good. Behind enemy lines, just very good to go in and out of combat. Also, you can combine it with Whirlwind Slash. Maybe I shouldn't have used it then for that demonstration. Uh, I'll talk about Whirlwind, I guess. Whirlwind, you know, trips... Uh, trips um, slow targets and there's so many slows in this game for instance you have this shaken effect from mocking howl which is an aoe trip and this this was an aoe trip you also have the crippling mire effect uh which you'd use here why can I, all right i gotta have him selected why couldn't i all right so this is also an aoe and if i then Use Whirlwind Slap, that's a trip. So yeah, there's so many, there's so many slows. I really like it. Whirlwind Slash is such a must-have for me. Um, and yeah, behind enemy lines, you can also combine with Whirlwind Slash because uh, it applies a shaken effect the same way as this one is a shaken effect. So if you hit, it's not the biggest of E, but if you hit a couple of people here, instant uh, trip. So yeah, very good. I'm sure most melees know about that one, but yeah, I'm just explaining all of them. Let's see, I think that's all for these. This one, just combine it with any slow you have. Um, see, this one is a slow. This one, obviously, you'd use in conjunction with this thing. So if you die, I don't know what that feels like, but if you die, you'd, you'd then blow up and you'd stun the mob. I think if I go play dead here now, they they un-aggro me. Yeah, this one isn't even aggro on me, because when you play dead against mobs, you drop aggro. <laughs> um, and yeah, then you have Hell Spare and Summon Crow's effect, of course. Pretty self-explanatory how you use that. Uh, let's see. Rate, I've already shown you. Uh, a rate is hard to be able to cast you know from start to finish because it's a channeling and you know whenever you get stunned or tripped or whatever it stops using it so I definitely like to use it after tiger strike uh, if I've hit five people see over to defense here you know this you use when you're low health this you use when you you know these are mostly tanky skills but I'll show you one combo with it uh, this one mocking howl um, you can of course use it just as a AoE slow that you then combine with Whirlwind Slash, but the reason I picked up Retribution here is to use this one for another project. Uh, if you go to the combos here, you'll read that the Mocking House range 20 meters if used under Toughen. It usually here has a uh, what? How far range is it? 10 meters? Okay, so 10 meters is this far, which is already pretty far, honestly. But if you use it while you have toughen on you, you'd use it 20 meters, which is 
this fucking far. Now you can't combine it with whirlwind slash because you're not gonna you're not gonna reach him anyways and trip him. So what is it used for? There, this is why uh, the second thing here comes in. Uh, the second combo inflicts provoked on affected enemies for four seconds if used under the effects of retribution. This is the only reason you picked up retribution. So you combine it with both, you use toughen, you use your retribution, so toughen because it gives you 20 meter range, <coughs> retribution because it will provoke. There's a difference between provoke and taunt. This thing says it will taunt. Taunt is towards PvE mobs. If you taunt a PvE mob, it will aggro you for the seconds it's claiming, but it does nothing to players. Um, a provoke, however, forces them to attack you. So as the tank, if I see my DPS is in trouble, like, oh shit, or my healer, like, oh shit, they're about to kill, you know, my healer, my DPS, I can, from this distance, use Toughen, Retribution, followed by Mocking Hull. It is kind of a long uh, combo, you know, with three skills. So, yeah, but basically, use this, this, and this. From this range, he's forced to, he's forced provoked on me. For four seconds, he has to attack me. And four seconds might not be a super long time, but it's definitely gonna save someone's life if if your healer or DPS is getting killed. And I provoke uh, all the people around me, like everyone in a 20 meter. It's not just for the one person. Like, oh my god, this one person is is gonna kill this other one person. But also, if I, if I see around me that, oh shit, no one's paying attention to me. <laughs> then you can force provoke them, and for four seconds they have to go for you. And that's four seconds your DPS can use attacking them and recovering from almost being killed. Or your healers can, you know, recover. So yeah, it's, um, it's definitely a very good one. It does, it does take three skills. I would have had tougher no matter what. I would have had Mocking Hull no matter what. But Retribution is one you have to pick up for this. So I don't always pick it up because sometimes I want Imprison or Invincibility instead. But if you want to do this combo, um, you'd need all three skills there. So yeah, I think that was everything. Um, like I said, again, if I just wanted you to copy paste my build, I would just make, make it, take a screenshot. This video will be over in five seconds. Uh, but I want to enable you to make your own builds not just doom lord but any builds i've just gone through all the skills that's why i've gone through all the skills because i want to talk about why i doesn't uh, why i don't use this why i do use this etc <laughs> so yeah i hope you learned something and um uh, like i said let's make this video the the official comment video um, for any build uh, questions and such and I'll try to answer it um, when I have time and such and yeah if you're still watching I bet this video is gonna be nearly two hours long uh, but yeah 240 million years of evolution packed into two hours that's pretty good <laughs> so yeah thank you so much if you're still watching I appreciate the support a lot and yeah i hope you learned something go out there and make your own builds don't just copy paste god damn it so yeah thank you so much for watching uh see you around guys